Hello everybody, DJ Vic Vapor with you. And this is going to be a short and easy tutorial on something I call a vocal harmony rack. So in my spare time, when I'm not trying to figure out uh, arrangements or beats and stuff, I like to go in and think of creative ways to use uh, Ableton's instrument racks or racks in general. And I come up with one I call vocal harmony rack. And it's really, really simple and uh, easy to use. So let's go through it and break it down real quick so I can show you kind of what we got going on here. First, I'm going to let you have a little flavor of it and get an idea of what I'm talking about. So I've just got a little vocal sample in here. Uh, that's something that we can put any vocal sample we want inside of this rack. Right now, I'm just using this particular one, but I'm going to hit the uh, key a couple different ways and give you an idea how effective this little harmony rack can be. I don't know what to do. So right there you hear the male and female kind of harmonizing a little bit. And there you hear if I hit a real short note, it actually you hear the male's voice and then you hear a faint echo of the female voice in the background. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know. So anyhow, you get the idea, so let me show you how it's created. And like I was saying, you know, I can put any sample I want into this rack moving forward now that I've created it and saved it. So breaking it down, we've got one, two, three, four chains. Solo this one called Low. And let you hear this guy. Really not a whole lot going on there. I don't know if you're listening on a laptop or studio speakers you might hear it pretty easily laptop speakers you might not because it's so subby and low but what we've done is uh, taken an EQ 8 and cut it off at 250 Hertz just isolated the low did the same thing adding an auto filter right behind it 255 isolating the low and a little overdrive at the end here and I think I moved the overdrive over just a little bit to 3.38 so that's the low. On the mid, let's isolate that guy. I don't know what to do. And what I did to get a nice sharp mono mid sound without it sounding too muddy is I picked up right at the 250 and I cut off at 2.32. So I just isolated that mid band and on the end I went into the cabinet effect and grab sit in the mix and I just pushed up the dry wet and left it on mono it gives you that nice clarity and nice sharp mid sound without it sounding too muddy I don't know what to do alright let's move on to the high isolate it and you can kinda hear that's got a nice big sparkle to it so we picked up on the uh, EQ8 right at the 232 and just left it straight across, isolating nothing but the high. I added a compressor in front of a reverb, left the makeup on, just brought the threshold down a little bit here, left the ratio and attack and release and everything kind of where it was already. And then on the reverb, just pulled it over, put it on the high quality setting, pushed it up to looks like about 69% left the decay where it was and left the pre-delay where it was I think I moved the chorus down just a little bit but I'm, I can't remember if I fooled around, fooled around with that or not um, and then the final step here is the harmony it is again the same sample and I've left that at that isolated high at 232 left that EQ alone left the compressor and the reverb exactly the same as the uh, the high so basically I just right click and hit duplicate and then renamed it right here the only main difference now if you look at low if you look at the sample the ADSR the attack decay sustain and release they're, they've all been left alone everything's the same on each one of these as well as the transposition which is down an octave for the sample each one of those have one octave down on the sample. The harmony, uh, the difference now is 
I've moved the uh, transposition up to minus 9, and I've pushed the attack, decay, sustain, and release kind of all the way forward. The attack, you, I pulled back a little bit because I just want the, the vocal to come in slightly after the key is struck or after the note is hit. I don't know what to do. You hear how it swells up into the full force there? You know, as it ramps up, it's not, it doesn't come in with a full impact. So all together, that little difference in transposition and difference in the uh, ADSR settings. I've also got, not to leave out, I've also got the LFO set at 14.8. And I've got the glide on the portamento set and 0 .30 on the LFO here as well just to give it a, a, just a tiniest bit of movement and that's kind of helping create that har harmony type effect as well but all together we've got I don't know what to do I, I don't I, 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 I don't know what to do we've got a just really nice little rack that we can fool around with and drop any vocal sample we want into here and, and get some really good dyna uh, harmonics and dynamics out of it for our uh, arrangements and our projects. So there you have it, a vocal harmony rack. And of course you can just hit the save button and save it in your uh, user library. I hope you learned something. Uh, thanks for pushing play, thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, have a great day.